Yo, yo, I assume you guys can still hear me. Not sure what happened with my sound there, but let me know if that's a problem. We're going to jump in a couple of tables of 1K, a couple of tables of 500 and see what's going on. Random stream day. Target A2. We'll be three betting this. Also three betting nines on the other 1K table. We get called, well, we'll probably have to call off first that shorts that jams. Good luck us. Twice is good, twice is good. Take the queen now. That's one for us. And we've got the nine there. Ooh, we win a double. That sounds good. Oh, we stabbed me on the river. Oh, we ran it three times, did we? No ace, no queen. I'll take that. I'll take that. Could have won all three, though. Uh, eights versus four, but I think we peeled this one. Flop set. I'm running good at 1k. Let's fucking go. Get two thirds of the stack there with nines. Didn't realize we were running it three times. Check all here with eights. Not going to check raise. And check ball again with the eight of clubs. And check all the real. Calling, good luck us. Yeah, that'll do. That's why you don't check raise, buddies. Table three, we three bet, we'll start with C bet. Nice, and over here on table four, we defended and we'll go with check raise. And I'll just check the turn. Might be pretty much drawing dead with anything. And all my bluffs want to give up. Lose to Queen Jack, but he probably just bets Queen Jack a lot on the turn. Plenty of queens though, so I'm just going to bet big. Tough of your games. But, let's fucking go boys, good to see you. The Ginge Poker video series is now live. Head over to gingepoker.com if you want to start your path to financial freedom. Hope to see you there. I'm actually in the middle of, um, you guys might find this interesting, I'm actually in the middle of negotiating my live poker staking deal. So for those of you that don't know, I used to play poker in Macau, um, obviously very high stakes. Um, my original deal when I went to Macau was being staked for 30 pounds, 60 pound buy. I'm going to do it all in pounds because the conversion is 10 to one, it's easy in my head. Uh, but £30, £60 is a, a roughly equivalent to $4080, so $8,000 buy-in. Um, and that is the lowest stakes they have that allows there to be a VIP seat. So what that means is if you're paying £10, £20, which is like, I don't know, $15, $30, something like that, um, then a VIP, wouldn't there wouldn't be an empty seat only for when a basic whale walks in, whereas £30, £60 there is. Now what happens... Um, so I, I wrote out this contract for the staking deal and I basically said that I don't want to be staked for lower than this because I didn't ever want to be in a situation where w what happens in some situations that I've heard in the past, like let's say that you stake a guy or someone stakes a guy for like 1k an hour and he just dusts, let's say he dusts like 30k and you're like, fuck, like you can't beat 1k an hour. I now want you to play 500 an hour and I want you to play 200 an hour and this guy is just buried and just... You're willing to stake him for 500, you're willing to stake him for 200, but he's now like in 60 buy-ins or fucking however, 150 buy-ins worth of makeup. And the guy just fucking hates his life because he's like, can't make any money or whatever. So I kind of always stipulate in these deals that you can't stake me. For, if you want to stake me for like lower than 10, 20 uh, in Macau, then, then then we're done uh, because that's not fair because I don't want to be buried. Uh, if you want to drop me, if you don't think I'm winning, drop me, but don't, don't just fucking put me all the way down to 200 now in the extreme examples to try and get a fucking 60,000 pounds worth of makeup. That's just not fair. So I think that's a reasonable thing to stipulate. Uh, so the stipulation in my deal was um, I would play 30, 60 and then the 10, 20, which is like in 10, 20 pounds is I can have that actually if I want to when I'm not in makeup. But if I was in makeup, then I would be a gentleman and say you can have this action because that's fair. I don't. Even, I wouldn't really play the ten twenty. The ten twenty, I just play if I was waiting for the three six to start. Um, as I said, the games aren't always that good, um, but you know it's it's whatever. Um, it's not a big deal. It's just a stipulation in the contract or whatever. Um, then we what also happens when you get staked is when there's better games you don't necessarily for example if you're playing 3060 
and then the the one hundred two hundred, which is almost like three times the stake starts. Like if you go get buried at that game, you're then like still the same same thing, right? You're gonna get if you bury, you get buried at the high stakes game, um, then you get you grind to get out at a low stakes game, which that doesn't really defeat that kind of defeats the point too. So what tends to happen is you have a deal where they buy action off stakes. So for example, they tend to try to normalize the stakes. So for example, if you're playing 30, 60, moving up to 100, 200, that's like, they they would buy the extra. So they'd buy like, I don't know what percentage that works out, a 70% off makeup. Um, so 70% of the result just wouldn't affect you at all. So why would you play the higher stake then? You're basically playing the same stakes. Well, then you'd only play the game with better. What usually happens is they don't buy the full 70%, they buy like 60%, so you have like a bit of bit of incentive to play the high stakes game when the game is good. Uh, I think we just followed this fairly close, maybe call Ace of Spades. Uh, so you, you, you're, you, don't, you get a bit of a cushion if the game is good. So what happened with my deal is it was 30, 60 pound, full staking, so I just get whatever action I get. But then when the game was straddled, because you also have to consider straddle, because straddle actually more than doubles the size of the game. Uh, then we just show this down. I don't think we lawful value about this. So the guy says to me, "Okay, so obviously he doesn't want to give me. Um, he doesn't want me to get buried in the straddle games. That's the, that's the thing, right? So he says, what we'll do is we'll buy twenty percent off stake. And the other thing that I always, always, always suggest you do if you're ever negotiating a staking deal is say that if there's any action bought off, the horse always gets first priority to buy. So." The reason you need to say that is because sometimes, and maybe you know, innocently or not, uh, a backer will, you know, if, if, if the game's amazing, right? The game's just incredible. Imagine if the backer just buys ninety percent of your action, and leaves you ten percent. And that, how's that fair on you? Like you're getting basically no action in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the game. You're gonna be three bidding this one. So, but if you if the backer thinks that you could buy most of the action, then he's like, "Oh no, you can't have more on stake." So the backer says, "Okay, in the uh, in the straddle games, and don't forget the straddle is only going on in these situations. Might be different in different places, but in Macau, the straddle is only going on when the game is good. So we go from thirty sixty to thirty sixty one twenty when the game is good, which doubles the stakes, uh, well more than doubles the stakes because now three blinds, uh, but that only goes on when there's a well in the game." So think about your win rate in the 3060, think about your win rate in the 3060, 120, and obviously think about the fact that the stake is now doubled. So you probably want, you probably it's probably fair to have more of your action relative, um, but not obviously all of it because you, you just doubled the stake. So what he said was we'll buy, he said, we'll take 20% off, we'll, uh, he goes, we'll buy 20% off stake um, when the straddle's on. And I said, that's fine, and I completely understand that, but if you do that, I will buy all of it. I will just take the full 20% because 20% for me is like 20% of a 12K buying game is me paying 2,400 pound game to myself. And then, uh, and that's when the game is amazing. So imagine playing a 2,000, if you can afford to play 2K now, if you can afford to play 1K now, this this would be an amazing shot take for you. This would be like the perfect shot take to like play 2,400 now for yourself. Um, so then he goes, oh yeah, you're right. That, that doesn't make sense. I'll tell you what, have it all on stake because um, he doesn't want to lose out on that action either because me buying it means he's losing out on the action because I'm the one getting that free 20%. So he goes, all right, keep keep that. And what, for what it's worth, the way it worked out was my win rate in the 30-60 game was probably like close to three big blinds an hour. Uh, but my win rate in the 3-6-12 game was closer to 12 big blinds an hour. Sorry, seven big blinds an hour. But the stakes are doubled. So my and the higher your win rate is, less the lower your variance uh, also. So, so that worked out. That I got full staking for three six one twenty because I kind of had to put my foot down a little bit there. So then when you go to the one k two k game, we agreed to buy thirty percent off. So that means I'm playing. So thirty percent of the twenty k is now leaving me with one. It leaves me with fourteen thousand on stake, which is slightly bigger than the twelve uh, than the than the the twelve thousand pound game, which is the thirty sixty one twenty. Um, but the thirty sixty one twenty is three blinds, so it's it works out roughly the same. So I'm only going to play. Obviously, a straddle game at 3-6 is way better, but you can't put it when the straddle's coming on. But what would tend to happen is there was one guy in Macau that didn't like straddling at 1K, 2K. So it would be a better game because he was there. Um, but uh, but the straddle wouldn't go down, which is great for me because like I think against fish in particular, you can manipulate the pots more post-flop. So keeping the line smaller uh, doesn't bother me too much. But I can see why people, I see why you want to do that. Um, so it was good for me. And then what, so we bought 30% off. 
And then what I did, I just used my bankroll to basically decide how much of, I said to him, do you, I said, how do you want me to do this? Because obviously you got to be fair to your backer and stuff. Like what some people will let you do is buy the full 30% and you can just shot take yourself for the full 30%. So 30% is you paying 6K now for yourself because uh, you're buying 30% off. Um, so you can buy the full 30% and then like maybe, maybe you fuck it and you go, all right, I've got to go back down to not buying it. And then when I get some money back, I'll buy it again. I said, you know, you could be quite of aggressive and like that. And he goes, well, I prefer it if it's okay with you because um, I can't stop you doing that because that, you know, that's the contract or whatever. Uh, I can't stop you from doing that, but I would prefer it if you just was consistent. So I basically came with like bankroll levels of when I would buy. So I started off buying like 5%, then and then my bankroll get to a certain point by 10%, and then my bankroll get to a certain point by, and eventually by the end of Macau, I had the full 30% anyway, just from my shared bankroll. Um, so I was then getting 30% of myself by buying it. So I got 30% exposure, if you will. If you ever get a high six, backing deal generally they want you to have exposure or skin in the game just because like it makes these senders line up and you don't have any reason to just like punt off um etc because like you're punting some of your own money too um so i have like 30 percent exposure plus i then staked for the rest of the get of the action which is 70 percent of which i get 60 percent off the 60 percent of 70 percent is 42 percent plus my 30 percent i was getting 72 percent with 30 percent exposure of a 20k an hour game which is pretty fucking good uh in my opinion but that was by the time I got to the end. Uh, so, and I, I made over like 1.2 million pounds or whatever. So, now, uh, so uh, when I finished in Macau, I lost, I think I was, I think the last session, I lost two binds. Uh, I'll get me following this to forbit. Sweat the flop. Oh, fuck. So this guy has paid the this guy has paid the the bring in. If that's what you want to call it. So my three bet, I guess I sized it up a little bit. My sizing's fine. So last session in Macau, I'm down like two binds, which is like forty thousand pounds, which is nothing, right? You're at one point two million, so two binds, just nature of the game. Um, so my makeup is now. So what's two binds? Let's do it in dollars. Uh, it's fifty thousand dollars, say. Uh, Fifty thousand dollars. Obviously, I bought thirty percent myself, um, so I paid the thirty percent. Uh, so my makeup is like thirty-five thousand dollars US. Uh, I then go to Australia, play the Aussie Millions, dust in absolutely everything uh, on stake. Played the twenty-five k bullet twice, sold half the action on the second bullet, uh, but didn't on the first bullet. Aussie money's like half half price anyway. Uh, so I think my makeup then went down to. Maker is probably sitting somewhere between sixty and seventy thousand US dollars, which relative to the stakes I'm playing is is nothing. And relative to the people involved is absolutely nothing. Um, and they've been really good to me because they haven't really like exactly forced me to go play live. I've been living my life in Thailand, spending all my money and all that kind of good stuff. But now it's time to go to America, and now it's time that I get the opportunities to play in like Poker After Dark. I'll probably get to play in Hustlers Live. I'll probably get to get playing like a bunch of stream games. And half the EV of streaming and doing this for you guys right now is exposure, which is going to get me to some private games, which is all probably going to be 100, 200 plus, which isn't the end of the world because that's relative to the stakes I'm playing anyway. But the problem is when, so staking in Macau is great because you can just, you can, there's volume. Like you can pay 30, 60, like almost every single day. What is makeup? Makeup is um, the amount. So for example, if you get a backer and let's say the back, let's, let's say you get back for a 510, which is 1K, I know. Uh, and you go and lose two thousand dollars. If you lose two thousand dollars, you now make up of two thousand. So next time you play, if you win two thousand dollars, you're even. So you've covered the makeup, and you don't get any chop. You don't get any profit yourself because you now basically break even. If you win three thousand dollars the next, so you lose two thousand, and then you win three thousand. You cover the makeup by two thousand. You know one thousand dollars worth of profit, and based on what percentage you've agreed, you then get your chop. So for example, if you're 50-50 and you're now one thousand dollars of profit, you both take five hundred dollars. Random back on question, what is the minimum amount of dollars I should have before I can comfortably chill out and stop playing? I, I don't know because I'm trying to figure that out myself, but poker just draws me back in. I love poker. I've got a win rate in poker. I make a lot of money playing poker. Um, I'm trying to convert my poker into income and I'm slowly, as I said, like figuring more stuff out about that and how to do that. Um, but it's... Um, I think I'll still always have poker. Like to be honest, I'm trying to grind this income so I can just play fucking huge stakes on the side and just not worry about it. I fucking love poker. I just try to get my income to twenty thousand dollars a month so I can just fucking. I think I have to buff this because I don't have a heart, even though it's a four. Poker. 
Hope he just falls at ace down with a heart. That's the plan. Yeah, so I don't know. If you want to quit poker, then you got to find something out. You got to make money somewhere. Okay, ace queen, we defend. Jack 10, we see bet and fold. Kings, we are going to four bet. That's the most exciting one. We had about 14 big blinds, which is $70. So that's 115. And we call jams. Glad we didn't see the ace. Ace queen, we defend. He bets 21. I think two overcards, two backdoor straights. We do see the turn. Obviously, it'd be way better if he had a club or a spade. And now we throw it down. I think he's going to fold a pair here. And there's a three. Six five, we defend. We're going to raise in position. This is the big blind, so we'll sit out. Let me tell the next blinds. Uh, versus chat raise. Oh no, versus three bet. They just had the best hand here too much. I think we'll call and get it on a safe turn. It's as safe as it probably gets. Okay, we're all in. Good luck. But he's turned a queen. I mean, I'm glad we uh, I'm glad we let him in for cheap. That's one for me. Two for me. Okay, well, that was a nice little donation before we left. Thank you very much, sir. So, unfortunately, can't see the result, but we're up 1.4, 1.5k, come on to my numbers. So, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the, the little session, and we'll see you uh, definitely on Friday, but maybe before. All the best.